Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. As always today we're gonna take a quick look at the markets and then go through some news from the last 24 hours or so that caught my attention. So let's get it started by just refreshing coin market cap really quickly. We see here the markets sliding ever so slightly since yesterday. Um, market cap about 1.5 trillion down I believe which represents a bit less than 1% down over yesterday. 24 hour volume at about the same amount and Bitcoin dominance also on about the same level. Most major coins down about 1 or 2% with some gaining a tiny bit. Tether has still not fully recovered its value and is still not actually tethered to the US dollar at 97.9 cents. And aside from that pretty much everything in the upper echelons of crypto is going down rather significantly with some smaller coins making up for it in some ways. But in general, the markets are down again. And um, yeah, this is the same movement that we've seen for the past four days or so. As you can see here, we saw that ridiculous spike where the markets grew 10% overnight. And then we just saw everything slide slowly but surely. All the major tokens except XRP, which in the 24 hour view has been going down, but is one of the few major coins that is higher than its spike from a couple days ago. Another one here, Stella. So that is what we see here. Um, not that much to talk about here, so let's just jump straight into the news. And um, we have something rather... I'm not sure if I should call it embarrassing, but Tron. Oh, Tron. Now, if you watched my videos the last couple days, um, um, Justin Sun tweeted out that Tron had entered a partnership with the largest company they have worked with yet, that they had entered a partnership with a company with a market cap, uh, with a valuation in the tens of the billions. And then it slowly but surely came out that that partnership seems to be with Baidu. But um, now it's looking like it's not really a partnership as much as Tuan is just using Baidu's products, which... Um, being a customer of another company is not really a partnership with that company. Um, I go to the supermarket on my way to work and I, I get myself something to drink and something to eat. That doesn't mean I'm in a partnership with that supermarket. But let's read this article here from CCN. And as always, all the articles are linked in the description. On October 15th, a trusted cryptocurrency source in China reported that the partnership Tron secured with Baidu was not really a partnership. CN Ledger reported that according to local publications, Tron acquired the services of Baidu to launch, build, operate and debug blockchain-based products on Baidu Cloud. The partnership between Baidu and Tron is basically about Tron buying cloud computing resources from Baidu. The two parties have made no contact at the blockchain business level, according to the O-Daily recently. Baidu Cloud and Tron have reached cooperation in the field of basic cloud business. Tron will build, operate and debug blockchain products based on Baidu Cloud in order to ensure compatibility and optimize development experience. Tron is a client of Baidu Cloud that compensates the China-based internet conglomerate to utilize its cloud computing infrastructure. Hence, it is not appropriate for Tron to claim that it had secured a formal partnership with Baidu. And keep in mind, this is not the first time Tron has been accused of overhyping and misrepresenting partnerships. This is this is just a PR nightmare for for Tron, and I'm um, I'm baffled by why Justin Sun for tweeting that out was a good idea, or why people let him tweet that out. Couldn't no one stop the guy? <laughs> anyway, back to the article. For instance, Icon, South Korea's most valuable blockchain project, signed an MOU with LINE, the biggest messaging app in Japan, to develop blockchain apps and integrate decentralized systems for the Japanese conglomerate. Such a relationship is considered a partnership because both parties benefit from it. Ari Paul, the co-founder of BlockTower and a prominent cryptocurrency investor, wrote, Assuming the below is accurate, this deserves to be called out as misleading marketing. If I buy a computer with Microsoft Windows installed, I should not claim to have partnered with Microsoft without clarifying the limited nature of the partnership. Last month, the Government of Australia and the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization launched the Red Belly blockchain on the Amazon Cloud Computing Network. 
Um, AWS Cloud provides innovative organizations of all kinds with a global network of compute power, allowing organizations like Red Belly Blockchain to quickly conduct large-scale experiments that break new ground. Simon Elisha, Head of Solutions Architecture, Amazon Web Services, Public Sector, Australia and New Zealand said. The CSIO and the Government of Australia directly collaborated with AWS Australia and New Zealand to test the Red Belly blockchain and still the Red Belly development team did not claim it had partnered with AWS as it merely obtained the services of Amazon. Cryptocurrency analyst Box Mining further emphasized that Baidu operates its own blockchain network called Superchain, and as such it does not have strong motivation to rely on the blockchain protocol of external projects. And his quote, Tron partnership is equivalent to buying cloud services and not blockchain business level. What do expect when Baidu has their own chain super chain? Thanks to CN Ledger for getting this to light. The Tron Foundation did not formally announce its partnership with Baidu. But Justin Sun, the founder and CEO of Tron, wrote to the investors of Tron that for the first time in the company's history, it partnered with an industry giant. And this is his, um, his tweet right here. Finally, first time to partner with tens of billions US dollar valuation industry giant, guess the name. For transparency, it's important for blockchain projects to explicitly describe the intricacies of the partnerships they engage in, as misleading investors to purchase cryptocurrencies could be considered as a dishonest activity that could hinder the reputation of projects. Now, it is important here to keep in mind that we still have no official confirmation of any of this from any side. We have a lot of different sources now, so it's reasonable to believe this is what is actually going on. But as long as we don't have any kind of official confirmation from either Tron or from Baidu, take everything here with at least a grain of salt. But if all this is true, if the partnership, keep in mind here, he specifically wrote that they partnered with this industry giant. If he was talking about them buying cloud computing from Baidu, then um, this is straight up misleading. This is completely unacceptable. He was hyping up nothing as if it was a big, um, a big uh, partnership. This is not a partnership. This is him. This is Tron being a client of Baidu. This is not a partnership. And that is, um, that is just completely unacceptable behavior to, um, so I'm still, still holding out hope that we get an official announcement in the coming days and that that will clear stuff up and that there will be some kind of legitimate cooperation, some kind of real partnership here. But it is looking like all Tron is doing is buying computing power essentially from, from Baidu, that there is no real partnership. And that is just, that is all kinds of messed up to be announcing that like this. Not the first time that Tron has been accused of hyping, of, um, of misrepresenting partnerships before. Um, this is, this reflects very badly on Tron, on Justin Sun, on the entire cryptocurrency world to a lesser degree. And this is just, um, I get that he might have been enthusiastic about this, but this is just, oh my god, why? This is not a partnership. This is not something that should have been hyped or announced like that. This is just not good behavior. This is just, oh, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We should have expected this, but I still can't believe it. This is looking like they're really just going into a customer, a customer relationship with Baidu and trying to, pre um, trying to present it as a partnership. That is just complete nonsense. This is, this is terrible. This is terrible. And this reflects very badly on Tron as a product, uh, as a project. So, um, like I said, I am going to wait for, I'm going to wait for more information for official confirmation of all of this for my final, for my final verdict to come down. But, um, if this is what is really going on, um, I just, I, I still think that Tron is a promising project in many ways, but, um, this was one too many times that Justin Sun has been, if this turns out to be true, this is one too many times that Justin Sun has been uh, misrepresenting, has been um, dishonest in his treatment of the cryptocurrency. And um, honestly, stuff like this just looks like they're trying to pump and dump the coin as well sometimes. So um, this is, um, 
this is just terrible. This is um, this is the worst of of the crypto world behavior like this. And um, like I said, I am waiting for official confirmation. But it we have various different sources now, and there's really very little reason to question the validity of the information we have now. And it is it is not looking good. It is not looking good for Tron. Anyway, some better news. Gates Foundation partners with former Ripple CTO's blockchain project. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has partnered with blockchain startup Coil as part of its mission to provide payment services for the unbanked. Um, keep in mind, Coil is the software solution that uses the XRP token to, um, among other things, reward content creators on the internet. The news comes via a tweet from Miller Abel, the foundation's deputy director and principal technologist on October 17th. Abel indicates that the organization and COIL will work together to implement the Interledger protocol and explore ways to support pro-poor payment systems. Interledger is an interoperability protocol that allows payments across different crypto networks. The technology was initially co-developed by former Ripple CTO Stefan Thomas while he was still with the distributed ledger payments firm. The same tech now being used as the basis of COIL, which Thomas founded earlier this year as Coindesk reported. While further details on the new partnership are thus far sparse, Abel also mentioned Ripple in his tweets yesterday. The Gates Foundation announced its partnership with Ripple in October last year, when the two released an open source software called Mujaloop, also focused on payment services to the poor and unbanked. Yesterday's development appears to indicate that the Gates Foundation will work with Coil alongside Ripple to further develop the Mojaloop platform, which uses Interledger technology and connects the different parties in the payment system to facilitate real-time um, real transactions. According to a press release published last year, Mojaloop is an open-source software for creating payment platforms that will help unbanked people around the world access digital financial services. Abel tweeted yesterday that Mojaloop payments are a national currency of the given country so that the system helps include and integrate the people, usually poor, who have historically been left out. The Gates Foundation has been exploring blockchain technology applications since as early as 2015 as part of its effort to improve financial inclusion. So here we see another valiant attempt to use blockchain for good. Um, we see a lot of talk about the potential of blockchain technologies to give the people in the world who have no access to world finance, who are pretty much excluded from the financial system, from the world system, to be included, to, um, to gain more freedoms, more access to the world and to finance. And this appears to be another step in this direction. Now, we don't have details here, but at least this is looking like a real partnership. Most importantly, this has been announced by the foundation and not by Ripple, not by the blockchain, but by the people aiming to work with the blockchain. So I'm very excited to hear more about this. The Gates Foundation is, um, is a foundation I respect greatly. Of course, Bill and Melinda Gates are also some of the, as far as billionaires go, they are probably the best out of the bunch. Um, they have given away so much of their money. They have supported so many projects that really help, that really make the world a better place. And it's beautiful to see them further their work with Ripple because we have seen that Ripple is also probably the most charitable large company involved with crypto. They have given away millions and millions and millions for, for education to help the poor around the world. And um, this, this is just wonderful. This is wonderful to see. And just more good news surrounding Ripple. Now, this itself is, of course, a partnership with Coil, not with Ripple, the company, but Coil is involved with Ripple's technology. And of course, the Gates Foundation is already partnered with Ripple itself. So some good news from this direction. Let's continue on. Goldman Sachs and Galaxy Digital's Mike Novogratz invests $15 million in crypto custody firm. Now, of course, Novogratz is a proper crypto whale. He has been in the crypto world early. He is heavily involved. He is a big advocate and he has been predicting greatness for the crypto world in the future. And he is once again putting his money where his mouth is. Let's read this as well. US banking giant Goldman Sachs and its former partner Mike Novogratz, now CEO of crypto investment firm Galaxy Digital, have recently invested in US crypto custody service BitGo, Bloomberg reports on Wednesday. 
In total, BitGo's Series B funding round has brought in $58.5 million. According to Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs and Novogratz together contributed about $50 million as their clients show growing interest in cryptocurrencies. Bloomberg notes that BitGo managed to raise a total of $70 million in all of its funding rounds. The significant investment from two firms affiliated with Wall Street might help BitGo attract more wealthy investors in the future, Bloomberg believes. Bitcoin, uh, BitGo, <laughs> sorry, not Bitcoin. BitGo is an American crypto wallet and blockchain security firm founded back in 2013. As Cointelegraph wrote earlier, in September the company received a state trust company charter from the South Dakota Division of Banking, thus becoming a qualified custodian for crypto. Goldman Sachs has also reportedly considered creating its own crypto custody. In August, insiders told Bloomberg that the company aims to offer various products linked to digital assets in response to client interest. The unnamed sources added that having a custodian operation could also lead Goldman Sachs to other ventures, including prime brokerage services. Moreover, the US banking giant recently led a $25 million strategic funding round for blockchain payment startup Veeam, which utilizes digital ledger technology to increase the efficiency of small business payments, with one of Goldman Sachs officials joining its board. In late September, Novogratz, who is well known for his optimistic crypto forecasts, commented on Fidelity Investments' decision to release a custody solution tailored to institutional investors, saying crypto custodians need further testing prior to attaining mass interest based in investor trust. So bottom line here is we see a lot, a lot, a lot more money flowing from traditional banking, flowing from large Wall Street firms and investors into crypto. And we get these news almost on a daily basis. Each of these individually might not be impressive, but I always read these out because you have to keep in mind just how much money is flowing in. Like 70 million just to BitGo. That is just that one company. Then there were 25 um, million here mentioned for Veeam earlier this year. This is just the companies that Goldman Sachs is involved in. Just two companies that Goldman Sachs is involved in. There are millions flowing into the crypto world, into companies affiliated with crypto from traditional banking every single day. And we need to pay attention to these news articles because um, a lot of that does not show up on CoinMarketCap or similar websites. A lot of this is investment in companies that are dealing with crypto, so it's not, um, it's not showing up in the market volume for the cryptocurrency market itself. And when there are crypto tokens being exchanged, it is usually over the counter, so we also don't see it happening. So do pay attention to these articles that we get almost every day about large amounts of money flowing into the crypto world. The explosion is definitely coming, it's only a question of when, because all this money, those investors, they are waiting for returns. And if investors want returns, they are coming. They are coming. And last but not least, we have a report here, or rather, a statement from the head of the Russian Central Bank saying that cryptocurrency fever has begun to diminish, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. So let's read this as well and then I'm going to end today's video. The head of Russia's Central Bank, Elvira Nabulina, I probably mispronounced that, very sorry about that, believes that crypto fever is beginning to diminish, major Russian news agency RIA Novosti reports on Thursday. Nabulina, sorry, while speaking at finance innovation forum Finopolis held in the Russian, um, South Russian city of Sochi, said that she believes cryptocurrencies and blockchain are now being treated more rationally. Fortunately, the crypto fever has begun to diminish. Technologies such as blockchain have inspired great enthusiasm, but now, as far as we can see, the approach to them is more sober. The central bank had also noted that entrepreneurs are now seeking ways to implement blockchain in their business. For instance, Nabulina mentioned initial coin offerings, considering them to be a perfect method to raise funds. However, she added that the fundraising method is poorly protected from fraud. An interesting thing we see here is the completely different stance. Now, she is the head of the national of the central bank there. If you compare that to what people involved with central banks in other countries are saying, for instance, in South Korea or in Japan, where the stance is that initial coin offerings are dangerous, need to be heavily regulated or even outlawed. This is the polar opposite from Russia. As a conclusion, Nabulina noted that digital financial technologies have, um, have finally gained mass adoption, explaining, digital finance is no longer the world of the advanced consumer. 
it is the world of the mass consumer. Nebulina is well known for her gloomy approach to cryptocurrencies and the technologies behind them. Back in 2017, she compared the international interest in cryptocurrencies to gold fever. This year, Nabulina called coins money surrogates, stating that they would not be featured on Russian exchanges. Furthermore, she has said that the central bank was categorically against regulating cryptocurrency or equating it with foreign currency. Despite the conservative stance taken by the central bank, major Russian banks are reportedly interested in working with crypto assets. According to local sources familiar with the matter, representatives from Russian banks even organized a private roundtable to learn more about crypto-related legislation in Japan, Luxembourg and Singapore and how to adapt it to the Russian space. As Cointelegraph previously wrote in a review of the current legal situation for crypto in Russia, the country is struggling to pass legislation for cryptocurrencies. The latest draft bill is rumored to eliminate a definition for cryptocurrency. While mining is defined as the release of tokens to attract investment in capital. In order to clarify the supposed contradictions in the existing bill, a lobby group, the Russian Union of Industrialists and Entrepreneurs, has started working on an alternative crypto regulation draft. So takeaway from this is, in general, Russia is not that kind towards crypto at this current moment. But these statements are not as negative as they might seem. Now, Nabilina has said some things in the past that are very negative about crypto and um, she doesn't seem to be a friend of crypto but at least these statements quoted here um, digital finance is now the world of the mass consumer and um, and the new approach to crypto fever those are not necessarily wrong and those are not necessarily negative now i think there's a perfectly valid reading of those as being critical of how how over speculated crypto was and that we now have a more rational approach and that will hopefully result in less price volatility and generally more safety in the markets. Now, I think this statement, for instance, fortunately, the crypto fever has begun to diminish. Technologies such as blockchain have inspired great enthusiasm, but now, as far as we can see, the approach to them is more sober. That is not necessarily an attack on cryptocurrencies or on blockchain. And while she does seem generally negative towards crypto and the central bank in Russia seems generally negative, they are sure as hell not as strict or as negative as some other central banks. And some of these statements are rational. Now, we have seen, we have seen a real bubble around the beginning of this year. That was a bubble. Now, there being a cryptocurrency bubble does not mean that cryptocurrency itself is not legitimate. We had a housing bubble that does not mean that housing is not legitimate. So identifying that there was a kind of fever and that that fever is now going to, um, is now slowly but surely being replaced by a more sober, a more rational outlook, that is not an attack on cryptocurrency itself. That is an attack on some of the investment that has gone into it, on some of the, um, some of the dumb money that had been flowing into it. Um, the investors that weren't really paying attention, that weren't really thinking, and now we are in a better space. And um, as much as I wish Russia as a whole was more positive towards crypto, I think these statements themselves are not necessarily wrong or a cause for concern. Anyway, with that, I'm going to leave you for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to get more of these daily videos. All the articles are linked in the description, as always, if you want to read any of them yourself. If you like the channel, you can support it by becoming a Patreon supporter. Starting for $1 a month, you get stuff for it. So go in the description, check the Patreon link there and um, check out my tiers. Um, more rewards and more tiers are coming, but I still need to figure them out. I'm thinking about doing some kind of exclusive extra videos for the channel, maybe, or live streams. But yeah, you can support the channel there. Also, donation addresses, uh, Binance link if you wanna if you wanna sign up to Binance. Um, no extra cost for you. I would just get a small, small portion of your trading fees. And there's also my social media links and an email address where you can send in questions for use in a potential question and answer video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.